Hi, welcome to more tips from the hips. The best tips and hips on the internet, in my opinion. Sometimes when you're running a groove in with a plane, uh, you'll get a piece of wood where the grain isn't perfectly parallel, uh, maybe a little bit brittle, and you end up with some chipping on the edges of your groove, like I've got here. Now that's not pleasant to look at, and if that was going to be on a show surface, then uh, that wouldn't be very good at all. As it happens on here, uh, the piece that goes into the groove comes down to the bottom of this edge of the board, so you won't better see that, that corner. But it's nice to be able to avoid it if we can. So here's a couple of tips. If you take a mortising gauge with its two pins, you can pre-score the work before you actually cut the groove. Now the pins on a mortising gauge aren't great because they're round. Uh, you can adapt them, can file them to be straight, but they do help a little bit. So pre-scoring before you plane will just protect that edge a bit. What you will find with the round pins is they will compress the fibres at the edges. So when you cut it, first of all, it might look as if you've got slightly rounded edges on there. Uh, they should come back, uh, especially if you put a bit of moisture on there. The knickers that you can get on most plough planes uh, can be lowered into the work, and they're usually used when you're cutting grooves across the grain. But if you're cutting with the grain and the grain's not perfectly parallel, lower the cutter, lower the knicker a bit, and it will help to put in a score line against the edge of the cut so that when the blade comes along it cuts nice and cleanly. Now when you've got an iron as thin as this one here on a plane like this one of the skates has to be taken off so that ends up with one of the knickers disappearing as well. So we've only got the one knicker on here now. Well we'll set that one but that means the other side of the groove could easily tear out. So what else can we do? Well one's good for one side to mark the other side, just use an ordinary marking gauge with its single blade and mark out the other side of the groove. And if you find it easier, you can always clamp a straight edge on uh, in line with where you're going to be cutting the groove and use a marking knife to run that line in. You can run in from one side and you can run in the other side as well. And normally grooves are running really quickly with these planes. Uh, the width of cut isn't very much, so you can take deep cuts. But if you try and take a deep cut in wood where the grain isn't parallel and it's easy to chip out, uh, then you're just asking for trouble. So when you start your groove, start with a very fine cut. Take a few passes, increase the cut a little bit, make it a little bit deeper, and then finally get down to the normal depth of cut that you would go with a plough plane. So you might be starting with a shaving that's as, as thin as this. Moving on to something a little bit stouter. And then finally going to full depth with something really quite thick indeed. And today I'm playing a bit of rosewood. Um, I'm going against the grain, trying to put a groove in here with a combination plane. And there's, it's really tearing up, digging in a lot. So rather than taking longer strokes, what I'm doing is just taking a little backwards and forwards until I get it deep enough that the deep enough that it's not tearing off the edges. If you started doing this and it was playing up the way this was playing up, you might want to immediately reach for um, your router to do it that way, but you don't actually need to. Sharp iron and uh, baby steps and you can do it. If all goes to plan, you should end up with some nice clean grooves with sharp edges on the corners. For woodworking tips from the hips and much more, subscribe now. And if you share this video, I'll send you some positive woodworking vibes. For a chance to win the nightstand I've been building, check out my Just Giving page.